if you want and take it from there. So I, I just want to uh, welcome you in to the first ever iCast um, shoutcasting course for high schoolers in um, iTeam USA. Um, it's so exciting. Um, I go around to the different high schools throughout the state um, watching you guys perform your, your wonderful esports games, but also uh, to see the shoutcasting. Some of you do so well, others, hmm, you, you need this course from Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so uh, without any ado, I'm, I'm going to just turn it over to Kevin. Our hope is that we can get some shoutcasters up and going by the time our, our real season starts. Mm -hmm. um, we also will have a shoutcasting competition um, March 18th um, at our uh, academic conference. And um, uh, those that uh, win that will get awards and trophies and uh, bling, 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 and all that kind of stuff. So. Without any ado, I'll turn it over to Kevin. Cool. Yeah. I mean, like I said, my name is Kevin. I'm the head coach of esports at uh, Utah State University Eastern. This is my second year doing it, and casting is something that I really want uh, to, to obviously help out with, and that's kind of kind of why I'm here. So let's go ahead and just start into it. Make sure the yep, there it is. So let's talk about the goals of the course a little bit. Um, some of these might seem obvious, but it's important to kind of keep that in mind as we're going through um, so you can target the goals yourselves as well. So building confidence uh, is really important and on-air personality uh, is, is incredibly important to being entertaining, to kind of know what you're doing. So that's going to be a really big goal here. Communication skills by collaborating with teammates, that's going to be incredibly important. Usually when you're shoutcast, uh, you want to have at least one other person there. But in reality, there's a lot that goes into shoutcasting and there's a lot that goes into being able to run programs like, like IT and to have these competitions. And so part of this course, you're going to, I'm going to ask you to work with somebody else and, and kind of bounce back and forth shoutcasting and really practice. So you're going to be learning how to be part of, part of that teamwork. Learning to work on a schedule is really important, obviously. Uh, I think you can kind of self-evaluate that one. But part of this course, I'm going to ask you to review some videos. And everyone's going to get the same video. And I'm going to try to give you some personal feedback. And I have some wonderful people from the league who will give you some awesome feedback. And um, Bob, can you remind me the name of the coach from the U that's going to be giving helping out a little bit too? I can't remember his name. AJ Demick. Oh, is, is AJ the one that's going to be coming? A, AJ, and um, I think that it's Alex. Alex, Alex. Is, Alex is the uh, person that to AJ um, encouraged to do it. So Awesome. So that's some personal feedback on the videos that you're going to be re recording of you actually uh, watching some of the games. So it's going to be awesome personal feedback, and you're going to develop some skills that way for sure. Understanding the importance of teamwork and trusting your peers. So this is on there kind of twice because of how important it is to be able to bounce off somebody else and really work with them and, and rely on them and then being reliable yourself. Learning the ecosystem of esports is number five. Uh, a lot of this is going to be done uh, because part of casting and, and probably one of the most important parts of casting is preparation. And we'll talk a little bit about that too. But in your preparations, you're going to learn a lot about how esports kind of functions um, kind of naturally. And the last one I want you to get out of the course is game knowledge. I want you to expand what you know about the games that, that you love. Uh, and it's really important to game knowledge to have to be really entertaining in, in in casting. We'll talk a little bit about that today today as well. All right. So how are we going to do it? What are the what's the methodology here? So during week two or starting week two, I'm going to give you shout casting assignments. Before then, you'll have a partner, and we'll hash out all the nitty gritty details about what needs to happen. But you're going to be given specific games to shout cast. A lot of it at first is just going to be clips. They're not going to be full full videos so you can kind of get a feel of what shoutcasting is like and, and hear yourself. You're going to get personal feedback from me. You're going to get personal feedback from the people we just talked about, like um, Alex or AJ or um, any of the people from the league that are going to come and, and help us out. Um, highlights. I want to highlight some of the videos for, that, that we get of you um, shoutcasting. We want to point out when people do a really good job, obviously. So uh, kind of encourage you there. And some real experience. I know at the end, we want um, at least a few of the students to go onto the, the league and to actually shout cast with them and, and to get some actual on air experience that way. And it's going to be a really, really important part too. Super excited to, to watch at the end. Okay, so now we can kind of go straight into the game and what that looks like. Before you even think about shout casting, before you 
really get into all the nitty gritty details, you have to know three things. You have to know who you work for, right? So that for the, in this case, it's either going to be your high school or I team is kind of who you're shoutcasting for. And you have to understand the different rules that they're going to have or different expectations that you're going to have as well. Um, some of the more obvious ones are clean language, right? You can't say terrible things on, on stream and that's, that's pretty well known. Um, in the kind of stories that you tell as well and the analogies that you make, you want to remember to, to keep them appropriate for, for what your, um, for, for really who you're, who you're working for. And that's going to be consistent throughout, right? Like whenever you move on in the esports world as well, if you ever move on to create content for yourself or create content for an organization, it's really important that you understand it and do the research um, on who you work for and what they expect of you. So that's going to be really important. Um, who you're talking to also is going to change over your esports career. When you're shoutcasting for this league, you're probably going to be shoutcasting towards parents, towards other players. And so you want to change your verbiage and language. And we'll talk about more what this looks like probably next time. But you want to have a good understanding of who's more, most likely going to watch your game because that's definitely going to affect how you talk about how you talk about the game or the interactions or even the players. So keep, in, keep that in mind. And one of the most important things about shoutcasting, at least in my experience, is the game. You have to know things about the game. You have to do your research before you go into the matches. You have to know who's playing. You have to know how different things interact. Um, to give you a few examples in League of Legends, you have to really understand how the ADC support dynamic works and all the different combinations that you can have in the bot lane. I'm not quite sure how many of you are familiar with League of Legends, but there's an, an immense amount of combinations and an immense amount of lanes that you can have. And you kind of have to understand how these relationships are going to act if you're going to explain it to somebody who either knows a lot about the game or somebody who doesn't know a lot about the game. And so doing your research on the game itself is going to be really important. At the end of the presentation today, I'm actually going to ask, um, I'm going to send out a link into the chat to have everyone take a short survey. It's, it's only three questions and it's more of a self-evaluation, right? I want you to think about how often you engage with the game content. How often do you play the video game that you like so much, whether it be Rocket League, Super Smash Brothers, League of Legends? And then how often do you engage with the esports side, right? How often do you watch competitions? How often do you watch other people shoutcast? Um, so just keep that in mind. It's only about three questions, so it shouldn't take very long at, at the end there. All right, so know who you work for. I kind of already talked about it a little bit. Um, one thing I want to highlight again is know the players in the league if possible. You're not going to be able to know everyone that you shoutcast, and it's not always going to be possible, especially in bigger leagues. But when you have the opportunity to know the players at your school or to know the players in your organization, you're going to want to know things about them, what their trends are, what, what, their, what their goals are specifically as players. Because when you know something about a particular player in, in the match, it's far more, inter it's far more interesting. So if you can know something about the players and how they play, that's, that's really important. And um, you'll get plenty of experience with that as well. Um, for most of you, it's going to be your classmates. It's going to be who you sit next to during class, obviously. And uh, you'll be able to talk to them and kind of have that relationship. All right, who you're talking to. I kind of talked about this already as well. And like I said, as you progress through your esports career, it's really important that you understand who the... Yes, who the uh, audience is. Uh, it's definitely going to change how you, how you speak to them. It's also really important to know and to understand that you can explain a game that maybe somebody doesn't, uh, there you go. You can explain the game to someone who doesn't understand the game without making them feel bad. It's very easy to look at someone and be like, well, you don't know how this works. Like, how could, how could you not? When in reality, it's just a matter of interest and preference. And so, just letting them know um, that you can explain something to them without making them feel bad is a very important skill and really adds to the overall enjoyability of your shoutcasting. If, if you're going off on a shoutcast and you're just saying, if you don't know this, you're, you're this word or that word or whatever it may be, it's just not entertaining, right? I, I probably wouldn't watch someone who called me names just because I didn't know something that, that they knew. 
All right. Like I said, this is probably one of the most important parts is know the game. Like you need to study the game. You need to play the game. Um, you need to study shoutcaster, other shoutcasters and kind of their styles and what you can do. It's really important to interact with different parts. I mean, I, I gave you the example of League of Legends, but Rocket League and Super Smash Brothers has, they have a bunch of nuances themselves and a bunch of really important aspects to, to understand that we're going to be going over as much as we can. Uh, I also want you to just remember that, you know, we meet for an hour every two, every Monday and Wednesday, uh, but the quality of how you're going to be at the end of, shout, of this course and shoutcasting is going to depend on how much you work putting you, how much work you put into studying and playing the game and, and recording yourself and thinking about shoutcasting. So a lot of this is going to be about practice, about actually putting in, putting in the work. Kevin, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, and if you're going to do this later, just tell me to be patient and wait, but I'm thinking about someone like me who's very new to esports, mm -hmm. and I'd like to be good at this, but let's be honest, I don't know the game. I don't know the players, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what they do. Um, so is this a chance for even beginning people like us to learn this? Yeah, definitely. It just depends on how much you're willing to kind of put it into the study portion of it. Um, I don't think there's any game I've ever seen that my mom couldn't play. Um, and my mom's <laughs> like, I think she's in her 70s. Ooh, careful, um, careful. Something like she that. might be my age. Uh, I don't know about that, but um, if I, I figured if, if my mom or people like my, my mom who didn't grow up with video games, who didn't grow up with computers, who don't really have that context can put in the work to study these games, I, I really think that anyone could. Um, so as long as you're willing to watch videos and do some studying and ask some questions and do some things like that, it definitely is a, a good possibility. And sometimes it's hard, you know, there, there's many times in my esports career where I didn't know something or I didn't understand the process and it can be daunting for sure. But as long as you're willing to put in the study time and ask questions, I, I definitely think it's something anyone can really get into and, and, and be good at for sure. And yeah. so one more follow up to that. So as we're working together over the next few weeks, um, other than just playing the game itself, are you going to recommend some other resources, maybe where we could find player stats or where we can learn about individual characters and roles. Is that part of this? Yeah, definitely. So okay. that's part of when we get into the, the games particularly, and I don't know if we'll have time to do that tonight, um, but sure. there are so many mediums to find out that information online. One that I use regularly, honestly, in my own gameplay to, to improve myself is called pro guides for league of legends. So pro guides, um, it's pros who make guides. I mean, it's kind of just like that. They go over all the details you can imagine about the game um, and they have courses from the very beginning to the very end about every aspect that you could possibly think about in, in the game. So a lot of this, these things I can, I can definitely recommend because I've done a, a bunch of research for myself because I, I had to start at the bottom of, at a bunch of these games. And so um, there's a lot of good resources online. A lot of them are free too um, that, you know, not having to pay money is always always really nice, <laughs> I think. Nice. So, um, okay, thank YouTube you. YouTube is also a really good place. I mean, YouTube has tons of content um, that people make. So, so yeah, I definitely will, I can make a, co a pretty cohesive list of things that I, or places that I would recommend to to visit. All right, so let's talk a little bit about during the game. We'll do more of this when you're actually making some videos and you're reviewing your own videos and kind of going into into details. Uh, but these are some things to kind of just know and to keep in mind as we're getting ready to kick, thing, kick things off. So energy that matches the game, right? So what that means is that at different points in the game, there are going to be different things that are happening that require a different energy level. So let's say you're playing League of Legends. It's the beginning of the game. You load into the screen and everyone just walks to the lane and there's really nothing, nothing going on, right? Like no one's really saying anything. Um, there's no action, nothing like that. That's a really good time to talk about matchups and to talk about how one character plays versus another character in that really analytical, calm way. And then once the fighting and the battles really start in a game like League of Legends, then that's where you can really have the more intense energy in your shoutcasting. And when, you're, you're, when your energy is consistent with the game and the different stages that the game is in, the more entertaining you're going to be to watch ultimately, which is obviously a goal that I want everybody to feel like they're entertaining to watch and to actually be entertaining as a shoutcaster. There's, um, a, there's a question, Kevin. Oh, sure. Um, one of the participants asked, when we cast clips, are we allowed to pick our own clips? Um, that's a good question. So right now I want everybody to do the same clip. Um, that way, a lot of the content is the same. I can give you that better sense of feedback. 
Um, so I actually am working with the league esports where all of your game, most of your games are, are played and shoutcasted to for those clips. I also have some clips from my own team that I'm going to be looking at and sharing, but I, I do want everybody to be shoutcasting the same clip. Um, so I'll just give you one one day or, or one week, and then that's kind of what you're gonna you're gonna roll with. That, that's a good question for sure. Um, let's see. The next portion is knowledge, and this is something that I bring up all the time because of how important it is to study and to to have the information you need and to really apply it. Um, let's say that you're loading into Rocket League and it's you're in the lobby and you're waiting for things to start. You can talk about the game and you can talk about what the goals are for each team and how one team can apply pressure on the map versus the other team. Uh, and the more you know, the more entertaining you can be as long as you feel like you can communicate that pretty effectively. So knowledge is incredibly important at every stage of the process. Next is improvising. Sometimes things are gonna go wrong. Bob and I were talking about this before we even started. There are gonna be times where somebody has an internet connection issue. There are gonna be times where somebody's running late. There are gonna be times where you just have to come up with something on the spot. So a combination of knowing how things kind of go in the game and being able to improvise um, is really, really important. And hopefully I can find some good clips that you can practice some of your improvising on. So just keep that in mind as well. And lastly, and this is the best piece of advice that I and the League Esports can probably give you, is have fun. If you're having fun, the people watching you are probably going to have fun too. If you're miserable shoutcasting, then the people watching you are probably going to be miserable watching you, right? So your audience is very much likely going to match the energy that you have throughout the game. So if you're sitting there at the beginning of a, of a League of Legends game and you're really going to detail about how the characters interact with each other, what the matchups look like, how the game should theoretically play out. And then once the action starts, you're really engaged, you're really motivated, you're really going. Those are times where shoutcasting is really fun to watch and the times that I watch. Um, there, but there are shoutcasters and there are times that I've watched a stream and the shoutcaster isn't funny or he's not entertaining or I can tell that he hates what he's doing. Like I can legitimately know that he is not doing this because he wants to. And at that point, I usually just mute the stream and just watch for the content of the game and just watch for specific game things. And at that point, I stop caring about what the shoutcaster is saying or doing. Uh, and as a shoutcaster, you probably don't want that to happen, right? You want the people to care about what you're saying. So, so have fun and, and really have a good time. Because uh, I don't know about everyone else, but I love to talk about things that I love about. And I really like to get passionate about those things. Um, so, and so, so last, last Thursday, I was at uh, Parker's school down there in Lehigh. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had one shoutcaster. And uh, it, I have to say it was kind of monotonous, even though he was really good and knowledgeable. I knew what's going on. And then uh, we, we talked another student into go, they wanted me to sit in there. And I said, no, there's no way I'm going to sit in there. <laughs> and so I, I turned to the other student and says, he goes, I don't know anything about the game. Um, and I says, I don't think that matters. So he goes and sits there and the shopcaster all of a sudden changed to explaining how the game worked, what the goals were and what they were trying to accomplish. And it became very fascinating and interesting. And they were just having fun. He was ha having fun explaining it to this guy. And this other guy was just having fun asking questions. And, and uh, I, I was surprised how, how much it, it was fun, even though the other announcer didn't know much about the game, um, just the good questions and uh, the camaraderie and the fun they were having. Yeah. And, and that really comes back to knowing the audience too. You know, a, a lot of the uh, individuals who are going to be watching the streams for your, for your schools, um, they're not going to know a, a bunch about the game, maybe because they didn't grow up with it and they're watching um, one of their children play, or it's somebody who is just kind of getting into the esports team and their and their school has it, and so they're kind of watching what it's about or whatever it is. So the analytical, the very fun side, can really draw people in, and it's a very very important point. See, so yeah, enjoy. Definitely in, enjoy the game. It's it's so important to really enjoy what you're doing. Otherwise, it's not going to be fun for for anyone. So uh, after the game, after the game is done, whatever game it is, whether it be Rocket League, League of, League of Legends, or Super Smash Brothers, talk about some highlight moments in the show, right? Or highlight moments in the game. You can talk about how maybe a, a Darius in League of Legends was able to one of you five people. Like that's definitely something you wanna you wanna talk about, right? Um, you also want to talk about next events. So whenever there's a next event coming up or the next time your, your team is playing, that's another really important time to, to talk about those things. And so that, you know, people kind of know what's, what's going on. 
Um, Bob, is there like a calendar that's going to be posted or, or how, how are people made aware of the events? Uh, there, there is a calendar on the iTeam USA website, but also um, when they sign up for Play Versus, there's a calendar of events. I would hope that each school um, would have their events and promote it as an esports club uh, when their next events are. Um, I know that we're going to try and do um, the game of the week where um, it will be delayed um, broadcast and um, the, the League Esports is going to actually ask some of us in this class um, to co-host with them um, and shoutcast with them uh, on those things. But as far as the events go, um, there, there will be a, a place that shows the brackets, um, but everybody's playing at four o'clock for League of Legends and they're, and they're playing three o'clock for Smash B, three, uh, 3.30 for Smash A, and then um, uh, Rocket League at 4 p.m. So, so the schedule's gonna be that way probably the rest of the year um, is what I can see. And then at 6 p.m., there'll be a, an actual, um, there'll be an actual uh, broadcast with the League Esports, which uh, it will be the game of the week. Right. So awesome. anyway, I, I hope that answers that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely did for me. Um, maybe everyone else knew that, but I guess I need that little bit of information. So what I want to do now is kind of start a little bit of a discussion about questions or concerns people may have. Um, I know there was already one about uh, what if I don't really know a ton about the game yet, um, which is, you know, a study is really important and powerful tool for sure. In the chat, I'm going to go ahead and put that link that I talked about earlier where I want um, you kind of fiddle it out. And it's mostly for yourself. It's more, mostly a self-evaluation with how often you engage with the content. So let me post that here. And it's just one of those Google, Google Sheets. So if everyone could just go ahead and, and fill that out. Um, also, if there's any more questions, I know we kind of were going on a lot as long as we, as we were. Is there anyone that wants to express any other concerns so far? I know we haven't heard from any of the students too much. No. Cool. So go ahead and just take a few minutes to, to fill it out. It's about three questions, nothing too, nothing too long. And that will give me and, and honestly yourself an idea of how much work you might have to put into understanding some of, some of these games. I also know that um, there are a lot of students who put uh, more than one game into the the chat, or not the chat, the survey when you signed up for the course. Um, what I really want to do is put you into course specific content because I feel like getting that game knowledge that you need is really important and being in that particular class is going to be really important too. And so uh, maybe at the end of the, there's an essay question, the, uh, the last question, the third one, maybe at the end of that one, you can just put what game you would mostly prefer if you put more than one in the original survey. And if you don't remember, that's fine. Just go ahead and put which one you're particularly looking into um, into as well. And that will give me a good idea of where to, where to place people and how to place people. Is there anybody that feels like they need to know all three right away? Or what, what are some of the, the thoughts from either the students or other participants? I know there's quite a few of us here who are from Jordan District, and we're not doing Smash, so I know for us it's Rocket League and League of Legends. Okay. Okay, that makes sense for sure. Awesome. Getting some responses in, that's nice. Yeah, and then I can make sure that they get put into those those two categories for sure. Oop. Yeah, I, I'm totally uncomfortable being on camera. <laughs> I don't know if the students feel that way. Uh, maybe they're more confident with the games. I, I would love to learn League of Legends, but I um, think maybe I could, should start with Rocket League because I could probably understand what's going on that, that they are better than I could uh, uh, the other games. Um, I know my wife and I, um, we actually put some of the, the high school games oh. on our TV and watch it and it's 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 as as exciting as um 
you know, watching any other sports game. So um, I, I think it's good, but, you know, I don't, I don't know if the students feel that way or not, or, um, you know, I, I, should call I don't some know. Of someone's name to see if they're, if they're here. What do you think about that, Bob? Do you think that would be all right? Car soccer is easy. League is rough. Yeah, I can I can definitely see that because it, so the question not the question the comment is car soccer is easy, which is which is Rocket League. League is rough. Um, I think that both have definitely their positive and negatives. Like some of, some aspects of Rocket League is really hard in terms of the three two one positioning or the um, like aerials and kind of how to shot cast those specific scenarios. I would say that Rocket League is a lot more faster paced, and so sometimes it can be. A little bit harder to shout cast in League of Legends and then vice versa. Kind of just depends. Um, with League, there's a lot of information. <laughs> That's, there's a lot of characters. I, I think last time I checked, there was about 100 and maybe 140 different characters. All of them with pretty u- unique abilities and, and how they interact with each other. Um, honestly, I put in most of my study in terms of video games and, and to get better is League of Legends because of how much content there is to, to go over. So I, I can definitely see how that's daunting. Um, but it's like anything else, the more work you put into it. And, and we can give you some tips on how to really compartmentalize League of Legends and to, and to learn it. So is there is there a list of all the players that you could go down and have handy at your, say, oh yeah, they, they chose this character, this character can do this yeah, and that. So what I can mm-hmm. actually do, since I'm sharing a screen, is I can probably pull up, and I, th- I think this would be okay. Somebody's, I think the... League of Legends tournament, like one of the world tournaments were, were going on today. And I can give you a, a view about what it would kind of look like when you get into the replay or into the live match as an observer. Um, you should be able to tell who is who and what character is, is what. Can everyone see my, my screen okay with the with the game on? Can you see it, Bob? I'm not sure if it's uh, still I sharing the PowerPoint. I I, okay. I can't see. All I all I see is the Zoom okay, meeting. Me, oh, resume share. There we go. I wonder if I can switch screens with it. Here we go. So this is the tournament that I think happened today. Actually, the L L E C Spring, um, and the format for when an observer comes into the match is pretty much the same. There's some specific details that the tournament does just because of the riot, right? Like the, the, the world tournament, but the idea is pretty similar, like really similar. So this is pregame stuff. Okay, here we go. So what you can see kind of in the middle of the screen um, where it has the player's photos, that's pretty specific to the this league, right? Like the world league. But what you see in the middle between the two pictures of the players is the different champions and kind of what items they have, what their creep score is. And the creep score is how many minions like they've killed, right? And how much gold they're worth per minion. Um, so you can kind of see what characters are who here. Um, you, you can also see it on the sides where it says A, AST White Knight or AST, um, I don't know how to say that person's name. But on the other side, there's the other team. And so you'll be able to tell who's on what team and, and where for League of Legends. Some of the more complex stuff that it doesn't show you here is what the characters actually do, right? Like this character right here, I know the tech room. I know that his E makes him go really fast. It can fear people. I know his R makes him charge into someone and even over terrain and, and fears them. And so maybe game specific things um, about the individual characters, it doesn't show here, but you'll be able to tell what player is playing what character. And, and knowing those abilities, it just comes with time and practice, like anything else, time and practice. So that's, so that's League of Legends. And this might seem really confusing right now, but the more you look at it uh, and the, the more you either play yourself or the, the more you ask questions, the, the more sense it makes. It just is one of those things that takes time and practice. And then, like I said earlier, it's, it's like you're doing anything else. The, the more you do it, the, the better you can, you can be, so. Does anyone have questions about, I know it's still pretty pretty new, maybe this screen or, or League of Legends in, in general, because I know that one is probably one of the more complex ones. The, the chat open. You, you mentioned uh, pro guides and is there, I mean, I'm sure they're out there, but mm-hmm. can you recommend a good site for like good like cheat sheets for like LOL champions? Because like you said, there's so many of them that like as a shoutcaster, if I knew there was a game coming up and I had like, oh, I know this car- this 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 player on this team tends to play this champion, I could like reference that beforehand and be like, all right, okay, 
<laughs> now at least I know what their specialty is or whatever. Yeah, for sure. I can actually show you um, pro guides real quick. Cause I have, um, I, I'm a pro user, but you can be, be a free one too. And so once you go into League of Legends and, and they do a bunch of other ones too. So I know that Super Smash Bros is here. They have a, the character, the character breakdown, which is awesome. But let's go into League of Legends just cause that one's the, the most complex one I would, I would say different courses and here are the champions. So, and there are many services like this one. Um, this is just my personal favorite, the one that I really enjoy, um, but you can go down the champion list and this is, this is all of them. Um, the tier just means how strong they're considered to be by pro, pro players and how well they're doing in, in the game in general and open queue. Um, but you can just go down and when you click on a character, let's say I want to look at Annie, she's one of my favorite characters. These are the items that you'll go and kind of go into that one, the guides, different videos you can watch about the character, what their abilities are. You can look up how that character plays into other characters. So this character right here, this first one is called Azir. And so this says that Annie is good into Azir, it's good into Zoe, and it's also good into a character called Malphite. Um, if you know that on one team, this person likes to play Annie, and on the other team, the person likes to play, like, let's say maybe Oriana or, yeah, Oriana, you can see who's supposed to win that matchup for sure. Um, well, that's so handy for that, like, pregame, like you said, for pregame prediction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, too, it's going to be easier uh, for your specific team, right? Like for um, your teammates, because it's easier to keep track of them than everyone, right? Uh, but when you're getting ready to shoutcast the course, or I guess I should start with when I'm getting ready to play a match in a tournament, I put a lot of research into the characters I want to play and into how they match up against other things, right? Like I'm constantly thinking about, okay, well, if I play Annie, these are the things that they're likely to play. Well, how do I counterbalance that with my own play and do, you know, A, B, C, and D? And it's the same thing for shoutcasting, really. You want to look at if there's any videos on the other team that they've been playing, maybe you can get some information that way. And the more research you put in beforehand, obviously the, the better, the better it is. Uh, yeah, definitely. But this is, this is one of my favorite, but there's, there's plenty of different things that you can look into. YouTube is also a really good place. Endless guides on, on, on it for sure. Um, and when we get into more of the game specific content, then we will uh, go a little bit, a little bit deeper but it's important to remember that some of these games have so much information, it's impossible to count it in an hour. So engaging with the content kind of on your own time and, and really looking things up um, as well is how you're gonna take your shoutcasting abilities to the next level, uh, for sure. I know that um, when I was trying to be a pro player a couple of years ago, I was putting in many hours. Uh, it's kind of embarrassing how many hours I was putting in, to be honest with you. But that's the same thing for shoutcasting. Oh, someone's trying to enter. I'll go ahead and sweet. But it's the same thing for shoutcasting. If, if you want to make it as a shoutcaster, it's about work. It's about dedication. It's about understanding that, you know, information is important and, and, and obviously to enjoy what you're doing. So is there more questions? Definitely some good ones so far. But yeah, League can be rough. League can be daunting for sure. League of Legends can be super daunting. Let's see, more students. I know there's about at least eight, nine students in here now. So if there are any students have any other questions or concerns? Because I know it's pretty, pretty general today. I do have a question. Good. So when do we start actually like shoutcasting or like at least practicing? Yeah, for sure. So on Wednesday, what our plan is to talk about the, at least the two more common um, shout casting personalities the person who's more analytical and the person who is more play by play and we'll talk about how to do those and kind of how to incorporate that into your personality but on monday the first monday is when i'll put you into pairs within your particular games because i want to give the people who put more than one game um, maybe a chance to decide what game they would want to do and then um, i'll give you some of the first videos and first assignments on that monday and what's that one week but Sorry, so will we be able to choose if we want to be a color caster or a shout caster? Yeah, that's something that you're going to need to um, work out with your partner and, and decide for sure. Um, we can look at maybe pairing you up um, specifically on what you want to do, and I can create a survey for that as well. But 
um, a lot of that is going to be the teamwork aspect of the communication skills that we talked about at the beginning is that you're going to have to work out with, with them, what, who does, who kind of does what, and that's going to be true for um, any point in your esports career. I know that when I watch pro streams or when I've been on different streams, uh, you don't always shout cast with the same person uh, two games in a row. Sometimes you got to mix it up and you don't always get the hand that you, that you wanted, right. Or, or the position that you wanted. So being able to do both is, is pretty important, but it's part of that teamwork and that, that communication you're going to have to going to have to have with them. Super good question though. Super good. All right. I can see that these are being recorded. Oh, um, Bob, you can probably answer that one better than I can, right? The question in chat. Yeah, we'll, we'll put them on our website and um, maybe what we'll do is we'll date each recording um, or a link to it according to when, when we broadcast or when we have class. So um, yeah, I think that's, that's a great thing. Um, so, so since we're all new, Kevin, and we're all new at school and our teams are all new, how would we go about getting stats on our team members or stats on our school? Or um, maybe there's nothing yet analytically to report. Uh, what, what would we do? That's, Wouldn't that's it be on point. play versus? Yeah, some, some of it will be on play versus. They have a breakdown of what the common things definitely are. Um, for the brand brand new players, um, like if there's any anyone just joining the team who didn't have a play versus account before, um, going to practices and I, I don't know how individual schools do the practices, especially because of the the COVID, the pandemic. Um, but talking to your teammates, right, the ones who are on the team, about how they play or what they do is really important too. Uh, that could be a really good way. It kind of just depends on how individual schools are running their practices. Um, but I would imagine that shoutcasters would be part of those practices in, in one way or another. So a lot of that will be um, like, if I was in the student's position, I would go to every practice that I could and watch them play and, and talk to them about their gameplay so I can uh, better shoutcast their personalities for sure. And one thing that I forgot to put on the PowerPoint that Bob and I had talked about is that I want to be able to give you the skills necessary to interview players as well. So I know um, if anyone here has watched pro games, right, at the end of the match, they will interview the winner or the winning team's co uh, captain. And so that's something that I definitely want to incorporate into the course as well. So kind of um, be prepared for that. Also be prepared for how awkward it can be uh, talking into a camera. I mean, even even me right now, I'm looking at the camera and there's a wall behind and I don't really see see everyone, mm -hmm. right? So be prepared for that, right? The first couple of times, it can be a little bit awkward. It can be a little bit daunting. Uh, but I would say don't let the first few times discourage you because the first few times are the hardest. It only gets easier from there. So don't let it discourage you or, or anyone. So looking at the responses for the short survey, they're pretty predictable so far. This is kind of what I expected, expected to get. Yes. Seems like most people engage with esports content pretty regularly, it seems, which is good, which is really good for sure. Um, the more you engage, obviously, the better, you, but you do want to have that, that balance. Yeah. Cool. All right, Bob, that's really what I had um, for tonight. I kind of expected more questions because I thought we were going to have like 20 or some odd, some odd, but it seems like a bunch of people couldn't, couldn't make it tonight, which is unfortunate. So what, what would you have us do then for next time, Kevin? Um, so it would be good next, for us to give us a leg up. Right, right. So next time I would say um, there are two important things that I want everyone to do. One is I kind of want you to think about how you would shoutcast um, if you haven't thought about it before. Like, are you somebody who wants to know every little detail and break it down for everyone? Or are you someone who wants to uh, be there for the most exciting portions and, and talk really quickly and kind of have that most amount of energy? Um, I guess I also want everyone to figure out what game they would want to do as well, because I know a lot of people put more than one. So that's, that's really important so I can place you uh, appropriately. And the third one is play the game, <laughs> play the game, have fun, have fun with it, really enjoy it, really enjoy it. I know I'll probably play League of Legends or something tonight uh, and really enjoy myself. So 
um, definitely those three things. So it's so a playing the game that you want to shout cast because the more information about the game that you have, the better, even if it's tricky at first and learning a new game can be really hard for, for sure. Um, knowing what game you want to shout cast is going to be really important and knowing what kind of shout caster you think you kind of want to be. And we'll go over more about the two different kinds next time uh, and, and what those look like. And I'll give you a bunch of examples uh, probably from pro streams, just because I think that the best example you can have are the ones that are the most successful in what they're doing. So I'll have a bunch of videos on the different types of shoutcasters. Okay, great. And if you're an advisor, just reach out to your uh, students and say, hey, we had our first course. And I, I know how it is. Sometimes you just forget because it's something new. Um, I'll also send out an email to everybody um, requesting um, that they uh, watch the first video and then uh, get ready for uh, Wednesday. Yeah, for sure. Um, Bob, are you okay with me putting my work email in there just in case anyone I, has any questions? About absolutely, course? yes, please. Okay, and this is also a pretty pretty shameless plug, but I am starting my recruitment for next year and shoutcasting is something that I wanna incorporate in the university team as well. Um, and so if you have questions about what university life might look like, especially at Easter in my campus, um, let me know. I'll put my email in chat. That way um, you guys can email me. I'm, I'm pretty good about responding to my emails um, just because all my work is done on my computer now. So um, feel free to email me about this course specifically about esports and about college opportunities. So, cool. and, and I have to say that last year, Kevin gave us two uh, fantastic scholarships that the uh, uh, two of the students that were with iTeam um, enjoy are doing or using now or playing on Kevin's team. So um, I, th I think this is a great opportunity, great opportunity. Yeah, and they're doing pretty well too. And, and like I said, I'm looking to give out some more and to get some more, some more talented students. So the two that I got were awesome and I definitely wanna keep getting, keep getting more talented people for sure. Cool. Okay, do your homework. <laughs> yep, for sure. I, I'm, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Okay, yeah. great. Cool. Okay, thanks day. everybody. We'll uh, see you Wednesday. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. Bye. Thank you.